Hello and welcome everyone to the Fantasy Grounds Unity Map and Image Creation. Um, I'm Josh and this is our Saturday stream where we go over all of our uh, art-related news as well as do demonstrations inside of Fantasy Grounds. Um, uh, so thanks everyone for joining me today. We got a whole lot of new stuff to kind of uh, go over today, so I'm super excited about it. I hope you guys have had a great week and uh, without too much... Uh, further ado, let's get right into it here. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Drake. Yeah, lots of new crazy cool stuff that's going on here. So we're going to we're going to dive more depth into the uh, animated files today. Uh, we're going to do a whole bunch of uh, stuff here. And all of this is in test channel right now. So you guys can go into test channel. Um, and try it all out. So I suggest that you do that. So the more feedback that we can get now, uh, the better. Um, and, but it should be uh, coming to live pretty soon. In fact, I'm planning on uh, having uh, in this month's uh, art pack release, there should be some, um, some animated uh, um, stuff in there for you guys. So uh, lots of really cool stuff going um, on here behind the scenes. Uh, but before we get into that, the uh, next thing is we have uh, two new dice packs that are be coming out. So uh, why don't we just uh, go over that real quickly? Uh, so uh, or maybe it's four four new dice packs. I don't know some some new dice packs coming out. Um, so we have the um, Anulis of Focus and uh, Knots of Fate dice that will be coming out here uh, shortly. Um, so we can get right in. So here is the uh, the base kind of element here. Actually, you know what? Let me uh, unlock this and move this right up here so you guys can kind of see it. Um, this is like the base kind of texture here with the default uh, colors. But then we have, uh, oh, no, that's not the right one. Uh, we have some nice new um, cool body textures uh, that go along with these. Um, and we have uh, lots of different varieties here that are kind of pre-made here. Uh, and you can see that there is like a, a like a lighting system that's on the desktop here. So depending on where you move these, will will change on how that lighting kind of interacts. Let's kind of put it over here. And this looks like a pretty good uh, neutral kind of element over here. Uh, and so as we go through, you can see that we got lots of different varieties that you can just kind of pick from. Um, and in addition to that, uh, as we kind of go through here, we have uh, lots of ones that you can. Uh, manipulate on your own. So as you've, if you don't know this, you can uh, come into your dice color here and you can change a lot of the different parameters here. So if we change our body to this, uh, we might want to change. Uh, yeah, let's do something that's a little bit more like. Um, complementary to that. Maybe something like that uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, let's let's put these back to their default here. Uh, and then we have some uh, default uh, textures as well here that you can that you can uh, do that. Now, in addition to that, we also have some new ones with uh, um, some new particle effects here. So, uh, and these kind of are uh, representative of the face texture. So if we go through, you can see that these uh, all have some nice new uh, elements along with that. Um, so we have these with and without the um, actual uh, particle effects in addition uh, and then we can move on to these ones so here we have a uh, completely different take on a lot of these um, and here we have a nice kind of uh, a hot oil uh, kind of style here and then um, as we can go through you can see that there's lots of different kind of varieties here's one that's kind of looks a little bit futuristic um, yeah very exciting stuff here and these were super fun to make so I especially like these ones. And in addition to that, these ones also have a unique um, particle effects that uh, go along with it. And these are uh, a new feature that has kind of come to this as well. Uh, let me kind of show that off is that if we go, I'll even go back to one of these ones. If we go back to our default here, you can see that our particle effect is going to um, be the same as our body texture. So if I change this, uh, you can see that this is going to change that uh, particle effect color as well. So super cool stuff there. Um, you guys should be uh, seeing lots and lots of cool new uh, uh, dice stuff coming out here in the future. I'm working hard on a lot of these things. And um, 
the two Joshes. Uh, my works have been working a lot on this stuff, so super great. Yeah, uh, actually, I think we'll uh, I'll stick with uh, these ones. I think. Um, yeah, might as well do one with the particle effect, shall we? Yeah, and I can move this back. We can just uh, reset that position there, and let's lock it. Great. So uh, those will be coming out shortly. Um, always a, a, a cool thing. I, I love the, the new dice features. I think it's, uh, it's really great. And if you guys are unfamiliar with this, um, you can actually, no, I think it's actually in the dice section. Um, you can set up uh, custom dice rolls. Uh, what you can actually do in here is um, create, um, especially if you have like um, uh, um, damage types and whatnot this will this will change depending on how the system is set up and if you have different uh, dice you can kind of have these set up to uh like if you're doing lightning damage it'll roll whatever specific dice set and whatnot you can set a lot of that stuff up uh, in through there i think that you set up your uh um yeah i'm not exactly sure i think it's it's rule set dependent so uh, when you go in there, you'll have a whole list of different things. I always do this stuff uh, in core RPG. It's a very basic uh, uh, rule set that most other rule sets are, I think all of them are now actually, um, kind of layered on top of. Um, so a lot of those things add in those features uh, depending on what's going on there. Uh, but let's get right into uh, some of this other stuff. Uh, we're going to be working on a lot of these things today. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with this, and I kind of went over some of this stuff last time, is that, uh, and let's jump into our assets here. Uh, with a lot of the new uh, improvements that's kind of gone on that Carl has pushed through, is that we have uh, support for WebM and WebP files. Uh, both of them can support um, uh, animations. Uh, so we'll, we now can, can uh, create uh, not only just complete animated maps, right? So if we go into and I have some examples here, for example. So if we go into um, something along these lines, and we have a uh, complete animated map. So let's let's uh, open something like this up, and uh, this will Uh, we can you can have a complete animated map, right? So uh, inside of this, um, you have all of these different elements and whatnot. But because of the robust ability to um, um, is there a way to hide the uh, dice in the chat window? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, no, I, um, I I don't believe that there is a way. You can you can change their location. Like you can if you click on um, this. There's a little lock on the side over here. Uh, you can move them around to wherever you want to. If you also you open up uh, the dice element, you can see you can also change the size of them. So if you want them to just be smaller or whatnot, um, you certainly can do that as well. Uh, the same is also true of your. Um, a chat window you can just unlock it and you can resize this to be uh, rather small and unintrusive if that's something that you're along those lines yeah so uh not only do we support like full um of animated maps but because of our robust creation system inside of fancy grounds uh one of the really cool things that we're able to do and this is uh, kind of what I want to uh, go over today is, um, and here are some of the test images that I've been working on, is that, well, I'm not sure that um, uh, because so much of the system is dependent on um, the the uh, interaction between the dice and the the chat window, I'm not exactly sure if that is something that is um, um, able to be done or not i really don't know um if you wanted to have a clear understanding of that you could probably put a post in the forums and i'm sure that um that moon wizard would respond clarifying the reasons of that
But one of the great things that um, we can actually do with this system is because not only do we support full maps, um, but we also can support individual files. Um, and this is going to really greatly enhance. Yeah, you're very welcome, Landress. I, I wish I was more knowledgeable on it, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but what we can do is we can paint over. So let's say, for example, you have a module. Uh, let's say something from um, uh, Wizards of the Coast or some other um, gaming company or some other rule set. And it comes with pre-maps uh, in the module itself, but they're not going to be animated, right? You could certainly scour the internet and try and find them. But I've been creating assets which will allow you to make them feel as though that they were animated uh, just by layering new images on top of them. So uh, let's let's do an example here. So if I go into uh, these elements here, um, let's we can actually use. Uh, why don't we actually use um, some maps that we actually created here um, on the stream itself? So if we go into our images here, uh, let's do something along the lines of. Uh, I think like this alien world has some like water elements to it. Yeah. So let's say we have. This is something that we made a long time ago. Uh, and uh, what we can actually do is, this is a static map. This is a conglomerate of all of these different elements in here, right? Uh, if we go into our painting tab, it's mostly done with painting. And you can see these are all of the little painting stamps and brushes and everything else that we've used uh, in this creation process. But what we can do now is we can come back into, uh, let's say, for example, uh, if we want to enhance this water, uh, what we can actually do now is we can we can use... Uh, painting elements to now enhance those maps. And I think that this is going to be a revolutionary kind of way that you can enhance all of the thousands of pre-existing maps that have uh, no animation in them whatsoever, but we're going to give it the illusion that it does. And not just through effects layers, uh, but we can now do it through uh, animated. And what I've been doing is creating like animated texture overlays and so on. So uh, let's say, for example, what we can do is we can come in here, and this is our, our, our water layer, right? Well, I'm just going to make a new um, a painting layer here. Uh, and I've, I've created some like these animated like wave uh, uh, motions and whatnot. And we can just stamp this right on here. So let me just grab this. And I'm going to move this over here. And you can see this is going to give us a preview of the stamp. So I'm just going to turn this so it kind of makes sense here, right? As it kind of cascades around. And I can begin to uh, stamp some of these images around here. I'm going to change its size, but I'm going to keep its orientation. Uh, and I'm just going to just drop in a couple of these, these rolling kind of waves here. And I can change all of the different parameters just like I could with any other um, image creation, right? What I can actually do is if I wanted to match up the colors and whatnot, um, holding down R, G, or B, I can use my mouse wheel, right? So I could I can actually change the colors of this to, to match the colors of my water a little bit more. Um, and I can do all of these things uh, on a static map to give this some sort of life and feeling, right? Oh yeah, we can do sci-fi maps. We do them on here all the time. I'm not exactly sure, Landress. I'm not exactly sure the um, the uh, the the kind of um, I'm not really you know on the loop on those kinds of things. Um, I just work with the things that are are given to me. So uh, yeah, but I'm very happy that it's there for sure. The export functionality. So uh, here we go. We we can we can kind of do all of this stuff, and we can start to uh, add in these elements, right? I can even uh, and we can use this because it's going to yeah, no problem. Uh, let me put one like right here, right? And this is going to be on this top layer here. And here we can see we have our rocks. So if I want to draw this down, I think that this is down here um, is the actual. Um, well, I want to put it like right here, right? And you can see that this is going to still be right underneath those layers. So it's still going to take into account all of that layer functionality um, that we had before. Um, but now what we can actually do, because this is a painted thing, we could even do this in, in many different areas here. 
but I've uh, been working very hard on creating lots of these kinds of elements that we'll be able to use to enhance all of the maps that you've created or all of the maps that you've already done. You don't have to replace anything. You don't have to, um, or any time that you get a new module, you don't have to search for new um, elements to kind of do that. You can just kind of paint right over the top with some of these um, animated things. Uh, which will just enhance the map that you already possess or you've already created or use or maybe you have like a tree for example that you already like um, i've created some just like uh, movement from leaves uh, that we can kind of place on them uh, to kind of give the whole thing life and so on so we're going to go through some of this stuff today uh, we'll also go into some of the other elements as well um, but i think that this is a uh, this is an unbelievable thing i don't believe that this can be done uh, I don't know, but I don't believe this can be done in any other uh, map creation uh, situation or, or um, VTT so far. Uh, I think that this is kind of uh, one of these really cool things that will be for Fantasy Ground. So for example, in the same kind of fashion here, right, I've created some, some, uh, some of these like um, waves for the... Um, crashing against the shore here a little bit, right? And this is all set up in a brush, and I'm going to do this on the same layer. You can see we can hide this layer, and we can show it, and this is going to have all of those different elements together, right? So all I have to do now is uh, I can paint this out. I believe that it's going to go in this direction. Yeah, this will be the, the right way to kind of paint this out. And we can kind of bend this around um, and kind of get this uh, going here. We'll have to, uh, I think, move this down in there like a little bit like this. This will require, because of the motion on it, it'll require a little bit of extra adjustment. Uh, but look at how cool that is. Uh, we've instantly kind of changed all of that dynamic from that static water, uh, and we've created a completely new uh, element here. And now it looks like it's already been a pre-created um, element here of an of a animated map. Right, and I have um, many, many other um, kind of examples on how to do this. So, for example, we could even, uh, let's go up and let's create a new uh, painting layer up here at the top. Uh, we're going to go back to our stamp here, uh, and uh, let's say, for example, um, and we'll increase the size of this, and I'm going to make these a little bit darker so that we can kind of see them here. So I've created, like, these kind of things where you have, like, these birds that are kind of flying around here. Um, so maybe we're going to drop a couple of these around. And these are just some examples of ways that you can enhance your maps uh, without um, adding a whole lot of effort. Right? This took us just very little bit of time. Super easy to do. Uh, and we've added a whole new dimension. Uh, in addition to this, right? let's go back to our, our layer over here. Uh, maybe we'll do it on the same layer. I think we'll do it um, uh, below it. Let's create a new painting layer. I'm actually going to call this one Fish. Now let's drop this one down. Uh, I don't want to do, to do it underneath uh, our, our waves here. I don't want it to uh, overpower our waves. Um, but I'm going to grab uh, this fish brush that I've created here. You can see that we have some fish that are kind of swimming along here. Um, let's make this a little bit uh, darker here. So a little bit more like shadows underneath the water. And maybe we'll even make them a little bit more blue. Uh, let's, let's bring that down a little bit. Right, and in the same kind of thing here, uh, what I'll do is let's, make them even, let's just make them a little bit darker so that we can make sure that we can see them really well, right? And so uh, let's kind of go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to come down here. No, we can go, we can have some going this way. And maybe we'll make some smaller ones. Or maybe we'll even do like a circle here. And we'll do like a little school of fish maybe that are swimming around in a circle. And let's now go into uh, on our, our layers tab here, because these are all by ourselves. We can lower down the opacity of those a little bit. And now we have all kinds of action that's going on here uh, in our scene. It looks like an animated map um, with a very, very little bit of effort here. I'm just so excited about this stuff. Uh, great, yeah. 
Uh, so uh, moving along in the same kind of direction here, I've done the same thing. Let's uh, let's close this one down. Uh, let's go to, I think, let's do one that's got like some trees in it and some other stuff. Um, what would be a good one for us to use? I think this one. So here's one that we made a long time ago. Uh, this is the Wizard's Tower, and we kind of layer, layered out all the different floors and whatnot. And here we have some nice static trees. Again, we have some water. We have some waterfalls. Uh, looks like this got a little bit wonky, so we can fix all of this stuff. Um, and now let's let's make this into an animated area over here, like super easily, right? So the first thing that we can kind of do is let's come over into here. Let's go into our stamp. Uh, I'm going to grab this brush, right? Uh, what is this one? I think we can just use this layer here. And so what I have here is just like some little uh, animated leaves that I've kind of created here, right? Um, we can also control the um, the colors of this a little bit. So we can match up to the ones that we have here. I'm going to do these as like highlights on, these, on this side over here. Uh, maybe we'll make this a little bit brighter. We can change its size and, and its uh, rotation here a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll make this one a little bit darker. And you can see we've instantly kind of created uh, this feeling that all of this stuff is, uh, it's got a lot of motion to it. We can even make it uh, much darker and do some on the back side here. Change the size here a little bit. We can even make some a little bit more red. Getting some nice variations as we kind of go along here. And so you can see we have instantly kind of created uh, a lot of that motion already. We're getting all of this kind of stuff going. We can do this and you can just kind of stamp these around, right? Like you don't need to, um, Just like you would painting uh, any other aspect inside of Fantasy Grounds, and uh, have some uh, like little animated flowers, for example. We can kind of just drop these right on the ground. You can see that they're like uh, have a nice little sway in the wind here. And again, we can change the, the layer formation here to whatever we want. Let's close up these towers uh, so we don't have to worry about those too much because we're not going to really interfere with that. Uh, but now let's, let's look around at some of the other elements that we can kind of do here, right? So we have all of this water. And uh, let's grab something uh, like this. So here we have a nice little kind of watery uh, element here. So I can drop this right in here. Let's uh, we can change all of its size, all all of the stuff that you can do with a regular uh, image here. Uh, we can do it exactly the same. Let's let's make this like uh, like two. Uh, let's make this uh, a little bit wider here, and I'm gonna lower down its opacity a little bit. Hey Drake, and we want to want we'll probably want to want drop this down in. Uh, um, so here's our, our upper water here. So uh, we might want to do another uh, painting layer and drop this down in. Uh, right on top, I think we want to do it underneath our shadow here. So it's going to blend in a little bit. You might want to increase the opacity there a little. And then we can grab something um, along like this lines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 24 levels right on it. 
And as you can see here, we can, we can start to add in all of these different elements to do all kinds of crazy cool stuff. We could even, uh, again, we can, we can change some of these parameters. Let's actually make that like, like five. So you can see all of the different kind of actions that we're having going on here. Uh, we can grab some of these uh, waves as well. And voila, we've instantly started to create all kinds of narration. Um, I'm going to move this here a little bit. Let's, let's lower our opacity here a little. Uh, so the way it works, it works exactly the same way as it does all of the other images, right? And we're using WebM because um, they're super compressed and very little overhead on the system. Yeah, right. So um, as far as I have told, and I've been, I've been working with this uh, pretty nonstop and, um, over the last uh, couple of weeks here, and one of the things that I've really noticed is that um, it it may have a little bit more of um, of an impact on um, right like CPU usage, but on the overall performance I don't see anything. I don't see any sort of impact whatsoever, uh, even in creating what what these actually are are much smaller. Uh, file sizes and because we're using the same image over and over again uh, basically the way that it's working is it's it's um, it's just like different instances of the same uh, element so yes if you were to build I think an entire map all with animated assets um, you might see some performance hit but what we're doing here is what I'm trying to do is create some very universal kind of elements that you can use in lots of different areas, right? Uh, these new assets are not available yet. There'll be some some out uh, this month in the in the next um, art pack release. This is all. Um, all of this is in test center right now, not the images themselves, um, but uh, the features are all in in test center. And again, we could grab uh, some birds here. And maybe we'll make these uh, a bit darker as well, just so they kind of show up. Do some little birds kind of flying around. Maybe we'll do one like that's over here. Yeah, you're welcome. So all I've actually used here is one, two, three, four, five different images, six, six different images. Uh, each one of these is actually pretty small uh, in its, in its um, file size. Um, so the impact should be um, fairly manageable uh, on your systems. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why we really suggest that you guys, um, uh, once everything comes out, please let us know if you see anything, any sort of impact or whatnot. Uh, so we can make those, uh, take all of that into consideration. Yeah, so I've also been working on, uh, let's say, for example, we can still use the same map, um, but uh, let's go into our um, fill element over here. Let's go, I'll do something like this. And so uh, trying to create some like seamless, uh, repeating animated textures. Uh, so if you wanted to make like a pond, for example, uh, I'm going to do this on, on this layer over here, uh, but you can just kind of pull out and this will have all of that uh, kind of going on here. And then we can go into our 
um, our fill adjustment layer here, and we can we can still uh, move this around. Uh, we can scale this, and what I can do is I can uh, fade out those edges, uh, and then we can even come into here. Uh, let's move this over, maybe like this, and I'll select these ones. We can change the shape. and create a nice little uh, instant kind of water element here. We can even come back in here and we can uh, use our alpha channel, uh, lower that down a little bit if we wish. Uh, we can also, if we wanted to uh, rotate the texture, we can use control uh, to change this, the scaling of, of, of that that's inside there. Well, one of the things that I really am trying to do with this, Drake, and, and, and this is, uh, I'd also love to get your guys' feedback on a lot of this stuff, is um, trying to make these tools that will make that impact less and less, right? Um, by using all of these elements that you already have here. Well, yeah, we can, we can, we can grab our little fish brush and we can just uh, put, our, put our fish right in there. Absolutely. And so uh, one of the things that I'm really trying to focus on in this is um, all of that, right? Like we want to, you can actually take this now, uh, let's say, and we could put this over um, and change its shape, whatnot, right? And let's say, for example, I'm just going to grab these and kind of move this stuff over here. But let's say we, we are... Um, We already have a map, right? We have something like maybe one of the the um, official maps from somewhere else or from a module or whatnot. You can now just grab this stuff uh, and just throw it right over the top of some of the stuff, right? Like we can, uh, let me just elongate this here a little bit. And we've instantly kind of added all of that stuff uh, right, right on top of whatever it is that we were actually uh, doing before, right? And because we can come into here, uh, we can adjust all of these parameters. Like I can make this a bit darker so it kind of blends in a little bit more, as you can see here. Yeah, right. So let's say, for example, in the in the Spelljammer ca campaign, right? Any of those maps that you might have, any of those things, uh, anything that you might have found, you can just throw some of these elements right on top of it, and it instantly kind of becomes this animated wonderland, right? Like all of that stuff um, just works cohesively together. So to create these tools that you guys can use, not necessarily to preemptively um, plan out like these amazing maps, which you can certainly do that with. Um, but to to have this kind of layered elements that you can kind of put over the top of other things that give them all of the same features, um, but a, a fraction of the cost. Right, exactly. Floating floating rocks, or or um, yeah, any sort of uh, just any sort of uh, elements along those lines. Yeah, floating rocks and and. Um, and uh, whatever your imagination kind of comes up with, right? So this is like super, I'm so excited about this stuff. Uh, I've done um, uh, lots of different stuff. I only have a few things here to kind of go over with you guys uh, today, but I want to show you guys just with a small amount of tools, the kind of things that you can kind of accomplish. Yeah, we could do, you could do any number of different things. In fact, uh, let's close this one down. Uh, and let's go to, uh, this is one that we made a while ago, uh, and this is like a spell jammer ship, right? So just with the elements that I've already uh, shown off, what I can actually do is, um, let's create a new painting layer, and we'll put this underneath the ship here, uh, but above some of this other stuff. So uh, like the same element that I was using before, as you can see this, if, we, if I zoom in here a little bit for you guys, this is just like this uh, animated texture. And this, yeah, I think so too, right? Uh, this is just like this animated texture that I was uh, intending to use for like um, water turbulence, right? That you can kind of place over the top of water. And it certainly uses um, um, a lot of that transparencies and whatnot. But let's jump into uh, their painting area over here. 
Uh, and what I can actually do is I'm going to grab this and drop this in here. And what you can see here is now I am uh, able to... Oh, yeah, this uh, this nebula background, I believe, is in the, um, the uh, space art package. Um, and what we can actually do... Yeah, I'm going to be doing all kinds of smoke and all kinds of other stuff. But let's... Uh, Let's let's kind of match up some of these colors here uh, to some of the stuff that's already here. Uh, and now I can start to uh, paint some of this stuff around, right? Now look at how much this is going to add in to... Uh, and we can lower down the opacity a little bit so we get some of this, this kind of stuff that's going on here. Right? And maybe we'll make... And you can even grab um, your color picker here if you want. And maybe grab something along these lines. We might want to add a little bit more uh, red to it. Uh, let's make it a bit lighter as well so it matches up a little bit better here. Now I've done really nothing major to this map, but you can see that it's already got all kinds of really cool uh, elements. And I also have a lot of these water textures uh, that I've been working on as well. Uh, so what we can do here is we can go into like a fill element and I'll make a new painting layer uh, just to keep things here a little bit separated so we can kind of work with this. And this also works with all of the uh, effect layers as well. So we have water that's kind of going over the top of this and that's also going to enhance all of this motion that's kind of going on underneath here. So let's jump in. Let's, let's, let's get rid of that stroke and let's, let's grab something like this. And I'm actually going to use uh, the ellipse here. Uh, and we'll draw out like a like a kind of a large uh, kind of element here. And you can see this look, looks a little bit wonky at first, um, but we're going to change all of that stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to change the size of it so it's more appropriate. And then I'm going to fade out those edges so we get this nice like uh, nice cool kind of particle effect. Let's let's move this so it's a little bit more centered here. And now what I can actually do, I'll actually make it a little bit bigger, in, in fact. Let's make those, those ripples here. And I'm going to lower down the opacity a little bit here. And then we can change this to any sort of color that we want to. But now we're really getting into some really cool kind of interactions here, right? Like you can see all of this stuff. Let's, let's actually make this one, this one's color um, a bit more um, on the orange side a little bit brighter. Maybe something like this. And now what we've done is we've instantly kind of created all of these different things. Now imagine once I've created, like you were saying before, uh, some of those floating rocks and whatnot, and you have some debris that's kind of floating in the background, uh, much like the birds kind of flying around and whatnot. And you can see how much, how little time this has taken to add a, a vastly more dynamic um, um, uh, interaction here. And we can even, uh, let's, let's in the same vein, we can come back over here, let's turn our fill off. Uh, and let's go. Oh, we can actually leave our fill on. Let me let me um, and let's grab uh, let's grab this this wave here, right? And so we could go in and let, let me just show you over here where. Uh, oh, I, I I guess I did turn that off. Right. So now we have. Um, I want our my wave to go in the other direction. So let me just uh, flip it here. And you see that some of these sizes, I still have to work out like how this is going to work and all of these things and whatnot. Uh, but if we come into our, our uh, uh, adjustment tab here, uh, let's change the size of this to something. Uh, maybe we'll do something like that. And you can see how you can start to add in, once you have lots of different cool things, uh, all of these ways that we can add them all together, and it's all got motion to it. It's all interacting. Very exciting stuff.
And we can even uh, grab some of these things. Let's, let's grab something like this. And maybe we're going to make like a like a trail that's kind of coming off of here, right? So we're going to make this uh, maybe something along these lines. And maybe we want to have it like coming right out of the back of our ship here. So maybe we're going to come at, we're going to come all the way to the top here and do something like this. And maybe we'll flip it. And we'll uh, lower down some of that a little bit. Let's lower down our opacity. Yes. Yeah, you can do lots of stuff like that. And we may even be looking into uh, animated elements where um, they could fire once and then be done, you know, so. And in the same instance, we could grab uh, some of this kind of stuff if we wanted to. And again, uh, Let's uh, let's actually um, like exaggerate this a little bit, so you can have like these kind of cascading elements out here. Now, all of this was done with the same exact effects that I was using, or the same exact images that I was using uh, on the water itself, right? So, and here, yeah, you can you can turn all of this stuff right off, uh, turn it right back on. Again, we could we could even um, let's let's make this like uh, just like black, right? So you could have. additional kind of elements. So if we came in down in here, like these dark kind of elements that kind of uh, go over the top of things, create these undulating interactions, rifts and whatnot. And we can, we can interact with these systems exactly the same way. We can grab them, move them around. There's no there's no discrepancy here on, on how all of these things kind of interact. I hope you guys are excited about this stuff as much as I am, as I am ecstatic. Yeah, yeah, all of it will be right. Uh, I'm not going to be creating any tokens, I don't believe. So um, all the tokens, um, I think that there's already a very robust uh, token elements that, that are going to be coming out. I think that um, Devin Knight has a huge amount of like animated tokens and whatnot and, and so on. Um, I may be creating them at some point, but uh, not currently. Uh, what I'm actually going to be doing is uh, mostly focusing on all this stuff. Um, and I, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any uh, completed animated packs. I might be just doing a lot of these augmented kind of uh, images for a while. Yeah, you can use actually anything as a token, right? So all of these images, um, there's no um, discrepancy in Fantasy Grounds for uh, what one uh, element can be used as opposed to another. So if you do have any sort of animated um, thing, it can work as a token, it can work as a stamped image, it can work as a fill, it can work as a, as a brush, um, all of those things. It's all, it's all there. 
Do you guys have any questions about anything that I've uh, I've uh, kind of demonstrated so far? It's a lot to take in. I know. It's I've been uh been trying to wrap my head around a lot of the stuff uh, as well, but lots and lots of cool stuff. Yeah, so the only files, though, that we are currently supporting for, for animation are WebM and WebP. And it should be noted that WebP has a little bit of a load time, uh, whereas WebM does not. So if you do use a WebP file, it might... Uh, take a minute for the animation to start when you when you uh, load up the map. <laughs> uh, text on a map. That's a good question. I haven't heard anything about it uh, in quite some time. So I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to... Hold on one second, guys. I'm just going to... Uh, They've decided to come mow my lawn while I'm doing this, so I'm just going to um, close my window real quick. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, th those are the only two file formats that we're currently supporting. Um, and so as long as it's it's one of those two file formats, then you can you can import it just like you can a PNG uh, or anything else along those lines. Oh yeah. Well, it's not ninety two here. Uh, I think that uh, luckily we did. Let me let me check and see what it's uh, sixty degrees out. So it's a balmy sixty. Howdy, chaotic good. Yeah. So yes, all of that stuff. And as I uh, as as I was kind of showing before, if you find any sort of um, uh, and this is a this is probably a good thing to kind of go over. Uh, often, because I I think that the power of of doing certain things is 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 kind of um, kind of crazy here, right? Uh, is that uh, if you do um, so? If I go back up into my data here, I have a whole bunch of um, of these test maps and whatnot, right? So let's say, for example, let's let's grab something that has. Um, something that we can kind of use here for yeah okay so let's grab something like like this um, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into uh, let's turn off our stroke and let's go to our fill and I'm going to I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drop it into my fill so what I've actually done here is um whoop, is I've taken uh, a, a total animated map. Now, this isn't something that you should do too often because it's going to have to load in that, that whole giant map to do it, but it is something that is totally feasible and possible, right? <laughs> 60 degrees. Of, yep. Well, it's, it's warm for here, so hence the reason why I have, like, my windows open and whatnot. But uh, what I can actually do is I can use this as a fill element, and then I can extrude out whatever piece that I want to, right? So let's say um, I, I grab this and I, I drag this out. You can see that there's a waterfall here that I might want, right? So now all I have to do is kind of move this over. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a lot larger. 
And what I can actually do now is I can come into my adjustments here, right? And I'm going to bring this down. And let's say I want this, this little bit from this map. I can now grab this. And we don't have to be too exact about this because I'm going to, I'm going to fade out the edges. And one of the reasons I like to use the uh, clips tool when I do this is because it just gives me a whole bunch of, um, of these uh, little nodes by which that I can uh, manipulate the image really easily. But now I have this, right? And let's say I want to add this to a, to another map. Now I can come back up into here, right? And I can fade this out. And I can just uh, drag and drop this right onto a new map, right? Like, let's say if I wanted to have this like pouring out over here. That's something that can totally be done now. Which I find uh, that alone to be an unbelievably useful tool. And you can do that with static maps as well. I don't want you to think that that's something. But any sort of map that you can grab and drop into there, uh, you can now extract out any sort of element that you wish. Uh, let's see what other elements do we have here. Let's go to um, <laughs> Well, the really cool thing about it is is like if if you if you do this, right? Uh, let's close this one down. let's let's go into another image record here. Uh, what is our, oh, this is our, our test that we were doing before uh, with that. But um, the same thing, what we can actually do, let's say, for example, we go back into our alien world here, right? Um, well, actually, let's go into our, let's go to, uh, let's, let's do one that's um, like one of these static maps here. So let's say, for example, like this map. Here we have this entire map here, right? So what I'm actually going to do is, uh, instead of having this, I'm going to create a painting layer here. And let's delete that. And in the painting layer, I'm going to take the same map, and let's say I want to extract that interior, right? And I, mean, I might even want to put a stroke on it. And so I'm going to grab and drop this in here. And again, well, I think I'll, I think I'll just do it with a, with a rectangle. We'll show you, show you guys how you can do that. Um, I think I'll just have a mitered corner here. And so uh, let's say I, I do this. And then I move this to the appropriate area here. I can go back into this area. Uh, let's go to subtract. Uh, and then I'm just going to subtract out uh, these elements. That's going to move it here a little bit. But I, I think what I'll, what I'll do here is uh, just kind of semi do it so I have the, the shape that I want, right? And then I can come back into here. And we can change this. Let's say I'm just going to extract this middle bit. And then I know I got to do a little bit down there. So let's um, line all of this stuff up. Uh, I don't need all of these. So let's just delete those ones. 
I'm just going to need one there. Uh, we can get rid of these. Get rid of that. And boom. So here, I've extracted out uh, this entire menu. We, we could get as, as precise as we want to here, right? Now what I can do is, um, let's say I, I want to reuse this somewhere else, or, or I think that this is like a great little thing here. I can now export this image, right? And I can call it whatever I want. You're not going to see the, the pop-up that I get. Um, because I have it just set up to uh, show you uh, Fantasy Grounds. But let's call this um, Cabin. I'm going to save it as a PNG file so I can maintain the um, the uh, actual uh, um, transparencies around it, right? And that's going to save it right into... Um, my folder for, uh, uh, I think it actually saves into my um, campaign folder. And so now here we have it right here, right? Boom, we have our whole new image of that. Um, so now what I can actually do is I can now import this into another map. So what I can do now is grab this and uh, let's say, um, uh, maybe uh oh let's let's open up a, a another one let's i think that we probably have like some winter maps here or maybe like snow i should get a more um standardized naming convention i think that there's or maybe like ice There's one that I'm thinking of, but yeah, ice and water. Uh, nope, not that one. Maybe it's hmm. Is there any like no maybe it's this one yeah so here we have like this uh, uh, this map that we've made a long time ago um, and here we have like all this stuff so what I can actually do is uh, let's go in here let's go into our painting tab if we want to we can just uh, uh, stamp this right in here Right. Let's say we we've created this element down here, and now we could stamp this right into uh, this map. Let's say that we have created this, and we would probably plan this out a little bit better than this. Uh, but you can see now how you could extract an interior or whatever, um, and then uh, and then put it right into something else very very easily. It takes very little time. Basically, what it does is it opens up all of that creativity. Uh, and one of the things that I think is great about this, and, and um, I can kind of show you, uh, getting off on a little bit of a tangent here, which I love to do. Um, let's say, for example, I really like this little section over here, right? Let's hide this. And uh, this cave that I made a long time ago, I can actually now just export this as its own uh, image here. And I'll do this one as a as a... As a uh, as a JPEG, and if I refresh this now, uh, you'll see that my uh, my snow cave have popped up. It's going to take into account all of this other stuff. So what I would actually do um, in this particular um, image here is, as you can see, it's taking into account all of the the different sides of it as it's kind of putting it together. Because I would make a duplicate of this, and I can actually I should probably just show you. Uh, this whole process here. So uh, this was our stream snow map. So let's go into our images and here it is. So I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to drop it. It's going to make a duplicate of it. And I'm going to come in here. Uh, we'll unlock it. 
I'm going to grab, grab the top map, and I'm just going to delete all that stuff. So we're just left with this. Then I can export this. And I'm going to name it exactly the same, do it exactly the same here. And now when I refresh this, you'll see here is that map that's been completely extracted from this other uh, map that I had created a long time ago. So everything that you create now um, is completely able to be used, right, over and over again. Well, it just reminds me of home, Drake. So, <laughs> so again, if we were to, uh, let's say, for example, if we were to go into um, like this snow forest here that we kind of created. Well, actually, let's go to the other ice and water. So here we have this. Uh, it looks like that there's a little bit of a problem with some of the alpha channels on some of this stuff. I'll get that squared away. Um, but if I wanted to grab this uh, again, I can go right into my uh, painting layer here, grab this, and here's a cave now, and boom, all the appropriate size and everything, I can just drop it right in there. Yeah. So you're, the sky is the limit now as far as like your creativity goes and the map making potential. Um, just think about how you can you can utilize all of this stuff and be able to um, um, develop your own um, library of, of image, not just images alone, but like collections of images together uh, to create new images, which you can then uh, add over and over again to uh, whatever other maps. Actually, what we did last time was we we extracted the um, that ship with some of the the wake and stuff stuff around it last time. So yeah, super cool stuff. Yeah, do uh, you guys have any questions on that before we get back to some of the animated kind of things? Are you guys so excited about all these new features as I am? <laughs> yeah, that's my job. <laughs> I am the enabler for art. Yeah, you probably will need a little bit better way. So if you guys don't know this, there is a tagging system that you can use inside of Fantasy Grounds. So if you go to here, for example, um, if you go into um, the, our, no, not that, but if you go into our, our products here and you hover over it, you'll see that there are underscores, like this says forest underscore background, and then this has its dimensions. Um, not all of them are, are going to have their dimensions and whatnot only when it's you know, i found it was is really revel relevant but anything that you you put in there right and the name and then these underscores uh, you can put in keywords so you can rename any image that you create or you bring in um, to have this kind of naming convention right so if if you put in for example um, whatever image it is right like, like you put in cave and then you could put underscore winter underscore um whatever 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 happens to be the way that you kind of think of the images that will then um be able to be used in the search itself right so as you can see here that this says forest and it says background so if i were to come all the way up the top here and i type in background all of the images that are listed with that um will come up so you guys not only do you there's not only that you could uh, organize them by filing them into different files, uh, easy to find, um, but also um, with with your naming convention itself. So this is going to show me all the folders first uh, where there are things with backgrounds. And then, as you can see here, um, not just the name itself, but, but these images that have 
uh, backgrounds attached to them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no time to play. Too busy making maps. Well, you, that's one of the great things I think about this new this new way of interacting with the mapping system is because you actually now like you can spend as much time as you want to, and it's never uh, any sort of element that you create. You can now export it, re-import it into another area, and I've shown you like you can export the entire map, and you can do a couple of different processes with this, right? So let's say, for example, um, if there was a map that you had created with um, lots of different elements in it that you might want to extract, you can extract that, you, you can export that entire map that you've created, and then each individual little piece, you could then load that in as a, um, as a uh, fill element, paint it out, and then uh, um, actually isolate each element that you want to export separately uh, if that's something that you desired right well, let's say for example if one of the interiors that we've created mm, what well, i think that we created like a victorian let's go i think that we have a uh, yeah, victorian house uh, where we did a couple of different rooms and let's say we want to do each one of these rooms individually right without having to be too much of a hassle what i would do is i would export this entire thing right which all of this stuff uh, would get exported it should be noted that all of your effects layers like you turn those off because that's what it will actually show up as that doesn't get exported into that that's something that happens uh, in the rendering pipeline later on so um, you can now export that entire thing, isolate each room, and then export them separately. So you could have the entire map and then each individual piece as well. And then you could just grab those rooms whenever you wished and place them into any building you were, you were creating. All pre-made. I'm getting all worked up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, you can keep keep everything in a very, very uh, a natural kind of style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I actually created um, a long time ago um, a template. I wonder if I still have it in here. of uh i don't think i do have it in this this area but um like all kinds of different ways like to create like character portraits you have like different eyes and noses and mouths and ears and stuff you kind of just put together yeah yeah exactly yep Yeah, hopefully in the future, what you can, what you will actually be able to do um, is have it all inside of uh, FGU. Right now, you can still export. You could, you could totally um, create your own um, uh, portraits and whatnot, and then export them and use them as a as a token. But it would be cool if it was it was all integrated. Yeah. So one of the other things that I think that uh, the motion system is going to really do well, let's let's actually go to, I've been, so here you can see I, I added a bunch of different um, layers of, of these birds kind of flying around here. This is the, the moonscape that we kind of created a while ago. Uh, I, I think it was probably a month or so ago. What I actually did is I, I put these birds uh, underneath this overpass, right? Like this rocky to help create um, this this level of, of depth to it. We actually made this map 
uh, and we, we created our own little rift in here. But here you can see how these animations, right, like instantly kind of create this, it automatically kind of looks like it. Uh, and I'll be doing little like wind gusts and things that you can kind of put around and, and all kinds of things. But I, I'm really, I'm really excited about all of these uh, elements here. I forgot how this, there's like a, ah, no problem at all, Drake. Sometimes you get a little, um, weird element like this uh, it's from the masks i believe uh, in the effects layers and i at one time i had figured out a way to get rid of it but yeah we have the built-in sounds now as well to be coming out with all of this new stuff All right, do you guys have any other questions? I'm going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to actually uh, make a map now that we've uh, we've talked about this stuff a little bit. Um, show you guys. Maybe we'll be, instead of making a map, we'll go back through some of the different other maps that we've created, and I'll show you how you can use some of these um, really simple. So uh, the amount of stuff that will be coming out is, is staggering. Um, I've been creating, like shafts of light and all the things that you think that might sh might be wanting to be animated uh, on a map um, things that you can add to any sort of static map that will instantly kind of add a whole new dimension to it besides like birds i'm going to be doing like bats and things for caves and uh, like uh, little creepy crawlers running around super excited uh, if you guys don't have another question, I'm going to take a short break, and then when we get back, we'll we'll dive into uh, some other use cases and um, how to use some of these features in creative ways. Great. Well, if you guys want to hang out just for a minute, I'm just going to refresh my beverages, uh, and I will be right back. Just hold on one second, guys.
All right, and we're back. Thanks for uh, hanging out, waiting for me there. I'm all uh, freshened up with my beverages and everything. So let's uh, let's get going. Let's uh, let's start to um, uh, create some new. Uh, well, let's uh, let's enhance some of the stuff that we've already created um, before we start creating anything new. And I think next week what we'll do is we'll use um, all of these different kind of new techniques that are available to us. Um, to kind of dive in and and do a brand new kind of project that uh, encompasses all of that stuff and a really kind of cool way that we can um, interact with these things. What, one of the things that I've been doing lately is um, uh, is uh, trying to figure out uh, a streamlined kind of technique process for uh, quick quicker map creation inside of Fantasy Grounds. It's already very robust, and so I will explore that a little bit. But I want to kind of continue down this road of um, enhancing the maps that we've already created with some of these new tools and uh, making it so much easier for us to uh, expand those uh, into this new realm of uh, animation and um, and all the other features that are kind of coming about. So let's go into our image list here. And uh, we can kind of go back here a little bit. You know that's that's a that's an interesting question and something that I've uh, definitely been thinking a lot about uh, is animated spell templates and uh, I think that uh, that is a definite possibility um, if not uh, in the fairly new um, uh, in the fairly um, upcoming future here. So wouldn't that be so cool if you pulled out like some of these spell templates and they were all animated with fire and, and all of that stuff? I certainly think so. Uh, great. Let's, uh, yeah, you bet. Uh, let's go into, let's actually do, I think we have some regional maps that we did. We'll kind of start there and then, and then we'll kind of like move in. Uh, because I think that I don't have anything that is like a pre-made kind of regional map, I don't believe. That we could, uh, oh, well, we could actually just take a, like a like, we can actually uh, do it a whole bunch of different ways. So we don't have to worry about that. Oh, we could actually do some of the completed map packs as well. Why don't we do that in, in addition to that? But we'll go into like a, so we have a regional map. Uh, we have a couple of them here. Now, uh, something like this, right? Like this, this is one that we created um, a while ago on the stream. And this is a very um, Lord of the Rings kind of Hobbit-esque kind of map style. And this is one of the, um, this is one of the, uh, the map uh, styles themselves, I think. That color might be off there. What is, here's our symbols background. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like that the, um, the opacity right now is having a, a little bit of an issue. I'll have to put in a report for that. So um, something like this, right? I think that will will benefit a lot less from this because this is supposed to be like this kind of like static kind of element here. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't enhance it, but I would, I would more likely, um, and this is the uh, other kind of style here. We could even go into, but something like this, I think would probably work a lot better for that kind of element here. I think we can just, uh, Let's just delete that. And here we have our coastlines, right? This has all of the water elements to it. And here's our water texture that's kind of over the top of it. Uh, it looks like that we have a vignette as well. Again, this was a, a map that we had created a while ago. Uh, but look, we can, we can do a, a whole bunch of different stuff with this, right? Like, so what we can actually do is let's go into our We'll close this down. We'll go into our data here. So data is, uh, if you if you guys are unfamiliar with it, you have two image um, files 
uh, folders inside of your um, your Fantasy Grounds um, hierarchy of folders. Uh, one is on the top level, which will go to all of the different um, campaigns that you have, and then you have another one that's specific to that campaign. So you can always have specific uh, images that you might be just using for a single campaign that it doesn't spill over into all of the other ones. So when it says data, that's that will be the ones that are uh, across all of the different campaigns. And so what we can actually do is we if we jump in here, we have, uh, so this is like a, a overlay texture that I've been working on. It's a little bit repeating at the moment. I still have a lot of work to do on it, but it's a seamless texture uh, and looping. So what that means is, is that the animation will always go through um, in the same kind of order here seamlessly, right? You're not going to see any like hitches or hiccups. And then the edges connect to each other and the top and the bottom does. So we can use this really easy as like a fill. Um, so when we go into here, what we want to do is we want to make sure we turn off our stroke and we're going to grab this image uh, and we're going to drop this right into our fill element here. Now this is, it looks a little bit wonky, right? Uh, because this is all done with transparencies. So what this is, is just um, some shadows and highlights with the rest of it being empty. It's got a default kind of gray background here. Um, so it's less kind of obvious. But we're actually going to use our line tool here Right, and what we can do, uh, let's create a new uh, painting layer. And I always like to create new painting layers because that keeps uh, anything that I do separate. So what that does is uh, if I have to move it or change it, or, or uh, if I wanna do something on the layer level, um, I can certainly do that. Now you guys don't have to work that way. You can layer lots of different images on the same layer itself, right? So you can stack them up on there. Um, but by having it on its own separate layer, uh, I just have an easier time kind of interacting with it. And if there's anything that needs to be done, I can duplicate that layer and, and so on. Um, but you guys certainly don't have to do it that way. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start to um, paint out here. And we can add to this as well, so you don't have to get it all in the first go here. And we'll be changing the scale of this and whatnot. And I'm just going to do a really quick uh, kind of representation here. We might even want to have brought this a little bit closer into that, that fade there. And while doing this, if you hold down Control, um, you'll be able to do uh, Snap to the Grid. And if you hold down Shift, you can maintain 90 and 45 degree angles. Uh, which can be really good if you're doing like uh, rooms or uh, interior locations. And as you can see here, I'm just uh, kind of uh, plotting this out. Now you can see, this is a little bit easier to see now uh, how this texture can be used over the top of other things, right? And we double click to end it. And so we have this really like base kind of uh, element here that's scrolling across all of our water. Now this is a little bit too overpowering and we're gonna need to do some adjustments to it, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower down its scale. Now the scaling is gonna cause it to be a little bit more repeating, but I'm gonna show you how you can use some of the other elements that I've already, that I'm just gonna be showing off today um, to kind of enhance that and kind of break that up a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fade out those edges, right? So it's a little bit more. Now you're going to see that we're going to have to make some adjustments to it because that's going to make uh, the interior kind of shrink a little bit. And that's okay. We're, we're more concerned about uh, the overall um, impact of causing some motion to happen on our maps, make it feel a little bit more alive, right? And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Control, and I'm going to use the mouse wheel to scale this uh, down. Right now, that's, that's bigger. And I don't want it to be um, to the point where it's, as you can see here, if we get really low, you can see it becomes really super repeating. So maybe something along these lines. And one of the other ways that you can kind of counteract that is by changing the angle of it. So if you hold down Shift and you use your mouse wheel, you can change the angle. And for some reason, your brain has a harder time um, seeing those patterns uh, if there's a little bit of an angle to it. You can see like this. 
And so uh, what we can actually do at this point, right, is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start to make some adjustments to this. I'm going to open this stuff up a little bit more. We don't want it to be too much, uh, but we want to have a little bit in through these areas, right? And we can kind of uh, play around with these and see what, what works and what doesn't. We might even want to adjust our, our, our uh, fade a little bit as well if we want to. But you can kind of manipulate some of this stuff around. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, and it's kind of fun. In fact, uh, I find it very, very relaxing kind of doing this stuff. We might want to break this up a little bit down and through here, but we don't want to overpower our islands or anything along those lines. And then we'll broaden this out a little. The more you kind of work in the system, the more you'll get a kind of instinctive way that these things will, will interact with each other. Let's move that in a little bit. Great. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my fill areas. Now we have this done. And I'm just going to lower down my opacity. I'm going to do that by holding down A and using my mouse wheel. Now you can see that if I, I brought this down to a lot, now I instantly kind of created this really cool kind of effect, right? Where it's kind of scrolling across. Now, another way to interact with this besides doing the opacity is we could actually change its color. Right, so let's bring up the uh, opacity, and it's, we can actually use a combination of all of these things. Whoop. The wrong one. Uh, hold on, A, bring up the opacity here. And so what I'm actually gonna do now is I can either hold down R and use the mouse wheel, and what that's gonna do is going to change the red value, so RGB, right? And I can also hold down the, the G, and it's gonna be the green value, and then B is the blue value. And the way that it works is because I do these in grayscale, uh, it allows you to interact with it and use pretty much any color you wish. Now, what that means is that um, all, the, the way the colors work in light and in, in actuality is the opposite as you think that they are um, in the real world, right? Like, so um, the real colors of light are additive, while as if you're mixing pigments, it's uh, subtractive. And so R, G, and B, right, are the primary colors. Green is a primary color in light. Um, and so what we're actually going to do here is we're going to remove all the red from it. And you can see that it's going to make a blue-green. So it's all we have left. And then we can start to remove some of that blue. I mean that green. And then some of the blue and green together to bring down to make it a little bit darker. Now that we have it kind of closer to what we want, we want a little bit less green in there. So, yeah. It's more along these lines. And now what we can do is now adjust it a little bit by doing it with the, uh, with the mouse wheel. And you can see really cool kind of effect that's going on here. Now, the cool thing about this system and the way that this works is we have this all set up, right? And this is where I think that the power of the layer system really comes in handy. Is now what I can do is I can duplicate this layer Right? All I have to do is come down here, and it's going to duplicate everything that I just did there. But I can interact with it on its own. It's not tied to that other layer, except for it just took all that information and it did it all over again. So all of that, um, that shape that I created for the fill element, all of the color adjustments. And now from here, what I can actually do is, let's, we're going to make a little bit more of like the highlights on top. So it's the same image. We've just duplicated it again, right? And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over into here, right? And I'm going to I'm going to make the the um, it smaller. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold R, G, and B together and make it a little bit lighter. Lower down that opacity a little bit, and let's make it a bit lighter. I'm going to make this. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to actually remove some of these parts here, but let's do um, a little bit of a larger, something like this. Yeah, and then what we'll do is we'll lower down that opacity a little bit. And you can see we're starting to get some really cool kind of scrolling effects here. We might even change its angle slightly. 
And then what we can do is let's make it actually a little bit brighter here. Uh, a little bit more on the blue side. And you can see it's re it's kind of really repeating here, uh, but that's okay. We we can we can actually come in and we can start to remove certain elements of this. And we can do that a couple of different ways. We can actually come in and um, adjust these. And you can see the more that we break up this image, the harder the, the time is for our eye to see any of those repeating elements. And I'll be working on these uh, a lot more to uh, make them less obvious uh, of their functionality here. I think we can get rid of that one, and we can probably get rid of that one too. Yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, look at how cool that is. And then if we come back over into here, you can really see that layered kind of effect. And we might even want to come into here, uh, go back into this area over, and uh, let's lower, let's make that fade a little bit more. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I can do this right out of the same layer if I want to, uh, but I could make a new layer as well. I'm going to grab some of these, these, uh, these cascading waves. I'm going to go into the stamp over here, and I'm just going to grab this. You can see here we have it all, and I want to make sure that they're going in the same direction. We don't want to have conflicting uh, elements like this, right? And the thing with the stamp tool is, is you have to set the color before you put it down, unless you're going to do it on the layer basis, right? And that's what I'm actually going to do. So what I'll actually do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new painting layer. And I'm going to make these a bit smaller. These are going to kind of be like these, these cresting elements here. Gonna close that down and reopen it. Yeah. And we'll go into our painting tab here. You can see we get some uh, some things here, but they didn't seem to show up. So let's there we go. And that's going in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna grab that and delete it. And let's come back over into here. Yeah, that's the direction we want to go in. Now, these are elements that we're adding to a pre-existing map. And now what I can do is I can go on to this in a, in a per layer basis here, right? And I could lower down that opacity if I want to. Well, I don't want to move it. I want to move this. And this is exactly the same functionality as using uh, the my mouse wheel as before, right? All it does is uh, I can remove the, the, uh, the red from it if I want to. And then you can see it's going to be very blue-green. I just want it to be a little bit on the blue side. But there we go. Now, if we come in here and we remove that, now look at how great that that uh, ocean is beginning to look, right? Very little bit of work that we had to do here, and we completely enhanced it. Now we could add like an effects layer on top of all of this stuff, and we could do like clouds, for example, and we'll uh, add a mask, and what we'll actually do is um, 
We can do something like this, and then we could remove certain elements if we wanted to. So we could, um, and of course, blur it out. Let's bring this down to something like uh, 55. So it's moving rather slow, maybe like even like 52. And when we can increase the, the shadows from our clouds, we could actually remove the clouds themselves and just have the shadows. And if we move the offset, we'll actually see those, uh, those cloud formations as they kind of come through here. And I like to have a little bit of clouds as well. And look at all of that interaction that we've done so quickly. Very simply have we uh, created a, a, a completely easy to put together kind of setup like that. Very, very cool. Great. So that's like one of the very simple kind of ways that you can kind of set these stuff up. I'm going to have a lot more uh, as time goes on. There'll be lots and lots more uh, animated kind of elements that you can kind of throw into these. Um, but this is just, just getting started here. So I'm so very excited about all this stuff. And now let's go into, uh, let's actually jump in. Uh, we'll go into... Let's go into our assets here. Let's let's grab some of these um, completed map packs, for example. Uh, there's a couple of things, and these are all um, with a very limited number that I've kind of loaded up here of uh, of animated assets. Uh, once we have a substantial amount, like I said, we'll be able to do so much more. Uh, but let's jump into one of these completed art packs. Let's do one. I think it's three. I want to do one that's got like, oh, we could do the waterfall for sure. Adding in all kinds of stuff there. Um, but before we do that, let's let's do one of the ones, I think it's uh, four actually. Yeah, this one has some uh, like sand on some rocks. Um, Let's add some of that sand kind of like pouring off it. That's what I want to try to do. So I'm going to create this image record. And we're going to open this right up here, right? So here we have a, like a little bit of a sand that's kind of going off of here. Uh, I think I can use those same kind of cascading elements to add some, some, uh, some movement and whatnot uh, to, uh, to all of these different stuff. And we can actually add in... Uh, some additional kind of stuff as well around here. Bring this to the forefront. So let's jump back up in here. I'm just going to jump in here and uh, grab some of these uh, these test uh, elements here, right? And just because you, these are uh, kind of set up for water, right, doesn't mean that we can't use them for lots of other stuff here. And so what I'm actually going to do is let me grab uh, one of these. We'll go into our stamp here. And I'm going to open up my color picker, and I'm just going to grab... Uh, some color of the sand, as you can see here. And we might want to change this as we kind of progress. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this uh, quite a bit smaller here. I'm going to lower down its opacity a bit. And we can flip it. We might even want to grab something like this. First, I'm going to grab this uh, hexadecimal code with Control C. And then we're going to drop this right in here. Do it maybe from like here. And what we'll do is we'll hit Control V, type that right in there. This is going to Mimic that, and that's going to grab the uh, the opacity and everything. 
We can even actually, let's do this and let's, let's elongate this. Let's make this like four. You can see something like that. And we can even make it a lot wider, uh, maybe something like three. And let's do something like that. Now, of course, this isn't what it's designed to do, but we've we're instantly kind of created uh, like this feeling, right? That, that something is happening here. There's movement going on. Um, there's a whole bunch of different kind of ways that this is kind of interacting. And on the same token, uh, we can use something like this to maybe uh, create some feeling of like uh, wind or whatnot. And again, we can hit control V. And I think what we'll, we'll want to do with this one is make it a little bit lighter. So let's grab this lightest element here. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's very cool. We could even put some like here. As you get like this movement across the sand. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. Very subtle. And we can grab something along these lines, right? Now I'll be doing lots of other uh, like leaf shapes and whatnot to make this work. Um, but we'll just match the color up here a little bit. See, we're just I'm just holding R, G, and B and, and using the mouse wheel. And we can drop that right on there. And I'll make that a little bit smaller. We'll do one over there. Instantly kind of creating that, that feeling of mo movement. Um, on the uh, plants themselves. I've also been experimenting with some other, um, like, uh, moving, uh, whoops, didn't want to stamp this. Uh, plants and whatnot. Uh, so you'll be able to just kind of plant a couple of, like, moving uh, elements around. In addition to all the other stuff, um, things like this as well. So here we have some nice little uh, additional kind of movement areas that um, we might even want to put some, like here we'll make this one a little bit darker. Something just like that. Now, one of the really cool things about the way that these work um, is that we can grab, uh, let's say, something like this. And if this was a layered map, this would be a little bit easier to do. But remember, we can bring this all the way down uh, to something like this and create uh, some additional kind of movement in our shadows. I think we'll do, and we'll bring that down a little bit. And we can do some here. We'll increase the opacity on these darker areas. And so it's only a few clicks, right? A little bit of forethought, a couple of color picks, and uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff. Now let's grab some birds. 
And depending on the scale of our map, we want to, might want to make this a bit bigger, right? And again, if you want to do like a, like birds kind of like flying somewhere over on this area, right? Yeah, rolling tumbleweed for sure. Yeah, there's something in the bushes. Uh, you can do the same thing. We can come over into here. Let's turn off our stroke. And instead, we can load this into our fill element. And then what we can do is just kind of draw out uh, to get this kind of like chaotic flying pattern. But we can also uh, move this around, scale it. This one, so we might want to bring this over here. Just have these like birds that kind of fly in over here. And then what we can actually do is move them over a little bit if we want. Super fun. Tons of motion going on here now. Let's grab, um, let's do something. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys what you can kind of do with like the uh, fish brush that uh, I've uh, got implemented here right now. Let's do some sort of like ocean area or water area. Oh, we have that, um, that steamboat, right? The riverboat, riverboat reef, this one that we uh, spent some time doing a while back. Uh, and here we have uh, like this flooded area down here. Um, and I believe that there was uh, a top layer to this. But here we have the riverboat and here we have um, the, all of our water content down here. Uh, this is going to be a great one that we can kind of add in lots of like fish swimming around and whatnot. So let's go over in here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, just do it right on top here. I'm just going to grab this, uh, this fish brush, right? So here we have this fish brush. I'm going to go over here to this circle. And then we're going to, we're going to put it wherever it seems appropriate. And then I'm going to change the colors and whatnot. We can maybe even do a couple of different layers and whatnot. But here I'm just going to drag out a circle of fish here. Right. I'm going to change its size and do like a different one. And I'll do uh, some fish that are kind of like swimming around like this. And we're going to be putting this down, but I can also uh, change this, right? I can just come in here. It's actually, as you can see, it just kind of creates this like uh, we can we can get rid of those ones, make it a little bit more streamlined here. But these interactions, right? Like doing this kind of stuff. And we'll bring that back up. So you can see how much, well, let's actually turn off some of these clouds. Well, we can leave the clouds on, but let's turn off uh, some of the uh, water effects. And we can turn them back on uh, once we get this stuff situated. But here we have all of these kinds of things. It's all in this layer. I'm going to go into the Layers tab now. And let's... Uh, darken these up a little bit because they're going to be like underneath the water so we're going to see like a little bit of like a shadow of them 
let's make them something like this. What we could probably do is make them a bit like darker and then lower down their opacity a little. And then I'm going to grab this painting layer and let's drop it down in uh, maybe something as you can see here. That might be a little bit too much. We might want to put it on top. We want to make sure that we definitely go. And so this is when I would um, see that's that's down in that layer. Um, so we might want to grab them if we do do it. I would probably paint on top. And do a little bit more of this like we don't want it to be the same on all of these different elements so i would add in some different kind of stuff there but look at how much like movement we've got going on in there now and we can go back into this too right as long as we're on the same layer uh, let's do some large ones right and again i'm going to do like this kind of like circular pattern We get all of this like cool like, like uh, refraction of the of the water, and we're turning the, like our water effects back on. Tons of new elements that are kind of moving here, right? Now what we can do is let's create a new painting layer. And we'll put this right on top here. Uh, we might even want to do it above that water layer. And again, I'm going to grab, uh, well, we're going to go into our stamp tool here. We'll do, we'll add in some of these, uh, these waves and whatnot. But I'm going to do them like coming out from underneath the boat. So it's going to have like this rippling kind of effect. And then I'll make it a bit smaller. I can go out a little bit further. So cool. And now let's do some uh, kind of like heading towards these rocks and around the shoreline here. And I grab something along these lines. I'm going to make the, this lower this opacity down a little bit. Very cool. We can even do the same kind of stuff with the inside of the boat and whatnot uh, and get a really good um, look at a lot of those things as well. Super cool. Uh, we can even do, uh, while we're at it, right, let's do, um, let 
if I can grab the right one here. We have our nice little brush here, uh, and we know that this is underneath our rocks and everything. I think I might make it a, a little bit, make it a little bit um, like wider. And I'll, I'll make it a, not quite as, as long, so it's a little bit more squat. So let's do maybe like 10. Yeah, it's something like this. And what I'll actually do is, um, I think we'll start down here. Whoops. Accidentally double click there. And what I'll do is I'll bring this back a little bit. So we can manipulate this after the fact. Line this up a little bit better here. And we could do even a couple of layers of that if we wanted to, right? Like we could do, uh, go back into this tab, we could lower down that opacity some and we might even want to make it um, a little bit bigger and then come back on this side we might want to uh, bring this in a little Line that up with our bottom here a little bit. We can adjust these, move these around. Maybe I'll grab this one and put it over here. So very cool. Look at all the motion that we've just added uh, to this map. I mean, we already had a lot going on with the effects layers and um, all of those kinds of things. You can see how cool like the smoke is that's coming up out of here. Uh, we could do the same kind of stuff uh, inside of there as well. And it required very little effort. Uh, basically, all we did was uh, we used a couple of um, stamps around to give some of these like wave motion things we did a couple of passes with um, the shoreline uh, and then we did uh, some fish uh, swimming around you know we have all of this movement coming out from underneath the boat so very dynamic and uh, next thing I'm going to be working on is um, I've already started working on like some light shafts, as I said. So there'll be really cool kind of overlays on things. Um, I want to do like some wind um, graphics, um, lots of stuff like that. We'll do some some like dust and sand and whatnot. So basically, my whole premise, and hopefully you guys will help guide all of this stuff and make sure that it's something that you guys are interested in is to create a lot of these elements that will be able to just be added to existing maps uh, by which you'll, you'll be able to... Um... Oh yeah, here we go. I guess we didn't actually finish doing that. Um, and so all of the maps that you already possess, all of the maps that you're using, anything that you're actually using, you'll just be able to throw all of that stuff right on there and instantly kind of create this new dynamic area uh, full of life and motion. All right, do you guys have any questions about any of that stuff? Any sort of input? 
uh, as far as like those uh, these the type of assets and uh, uh, the way those things uh, are going to uh, impact everything that uh, kind of use out here. And this is uh, totally using all the lighting system and everything. As you can see here, here's with the lights off. Yeah, a very, very exciting times. It should be uh, releasing um, shortly. And it is in test channel now. So if you guys want to go into test channel and try out a lot of the new features, uh, you certainly can. All right, guys. Well, if there's no other questions or if there's nothing else that you guys want um, uh, information on or if, or if there's no other input, um, I think we'll we'll call it here for today. I think that we've gone over quite a lot of stuff, uh, showcased a lot of the cool new features that are coming, um, as well as some of the assets that will be coming out. Um, there'll be a lot more in the future as well. But if there's nothing else that you guys uh, have, uh, I think we'll call it here for today. Oh, it's below that area down there. Yeah, thanks so much, guys, for hanging out with me. It's super lot of fun, and 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 next week we'll uh, we'll dive into all the different tools, and we'll we'll make some really cool stuff. Uh, and I'll have a lot more uh, stuff ready to go uh, next week. So uh, hopefully we'll see you all then, and have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, hopefully you guys have a wonderful uh, week as well, and we'll see you next time.